my story is one of the, uh, the Grimm's fairy tales. And it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a king. And he would often travel through his land to see what was new. And as he was going through the land, he heard rumors that a boy had just been born. And this boy was going to grow up and marry the princess. And this was very interesting to the king. So he found the house where the baby boy was. He introduced himself to the parents. And he said, I heard your son is going to marry my daughter when he grows up. And the parents said, well, well, yes, your majesty. That's what people say, that he, he was born under a lucky sign and have luck through his life and he'll marry the princess. And the king thought for a moment and he said, you know, if this is true, then you should allow me to take this boy to the castle and raise him in courtly ways. So when the time comes for him to marry my daughter, he will be worthy of it. Now, the parents didn't want to do this. This was their son, their, their baby. But at the same time, they thought he would probably have a much better life at the castle than they could ever give him. So finally, they gave the king their baby. He took the baby and he rode out of the village. He crossed over a bridge. And as soon as he crossed over, he got off his horse, put the baby in a wooden box, threw it in the river and said, now that boy will never marry my daughter. And he rode away. Now, as luck would have it, the box didn't sink. It actually floated down the river and it became stuck in a water wheel. And the miller was wondering why did his, his mill stop turning? And so he ran out and he saw that there was this box stuck in the, the, the water wheel itself. And he thought, well, maybe it has money or gold or jewels in it. So he reached in and he grabbed and he pulled it out, opened it up. And what did he find inside? He found a baby, which was very unusual to find babies in boxes in the river. Not, you know, maybe, maybe certain months of the, out of the year, but definitely not at that time. Well, what was he going to do? Well, he decided that he and his wife had never had a baby boy before. So they raised him as their own because they, they always wanted one. And time went by, years went by, and the king was once again traveling through different parts of his kingdom. And he came to the millers and they gave him food and they gave him rest. And he commented how nice their son was. He said, you know, your, your son there, he's very courteous. He's, he's such a gentleman. And they said, why, thank you, your majesty, but he, he's not really our son. The king said, well, what do you mean? Well, it's an amazing story. We found him in a box in the river. The king said, a box in the river? Was this about 15 years ago? They were like, well, yes, your majesty. How did you know? Uh, I was just guessing. <laughs> and he realized that this was the same boy. And he was not going to allow this boy to be married to his daughter. So he said, um, would your son be willing to take a letter from me to the queen? And they said, oh, of course, your majesty. Oh, good. Oh, oh uh, can your son read? Well, no, he never really learned to read too well. Well, that's fine. That's fine. So the king took a piece of paper and he wrote a letter. And it said, my dearest queen. Please take the boy who gives you this letter and cut off his head right away. He folded it up. He gave it to the boy and said, bring that to my wife, the queen, and you will get your reward. So the boy took the letter, put it in his pocket, and he ran off. As luck would have it, he got lost in the woods. <laughs> it became dark. He was hungry. He didn't know what to do. He saw a cave and he thought, well, maybe he'd stay there for the night. But he went in there. There was a woman who said, what are you doing here? Don't you know this cave is owned by thieves? If they find you, they, they might kill you. And the boy started to cry. And he said, please, please, please. I, I, I'm only delivering a letter from the king to the queen. Uh, I just need a place to stay for the night. I won't say anything about the thieves or this cave, anything. She said, all right, come in. I'll give you some food. You can go to sleep and I will try to keep the thieves off of you. <laughs> he came in, he had some dinner, and then he finally went to sleep on some straw in the corner. Shortly after he fell asleep, who came home but the thieves? And the head thief said, who is this boy? What's he doing here? And she said, leave him alone. He's just delivering a letter for the king. He won't say anything about any of us. He'll be gone in the morning. And the head thief said, a letter for the king, eh? And he took the letter out of the boy's pocket, opened it up and read it. And he said, what a horrible king we have. And he <laughs> tore it up. Then he took another piece of paper and he wrote another letter in the king's handwriting, folded that up, put it in the boy's pocket. The next morning when the boy woke up, the thieves are gone. He found his way to the castle, went to the queen and handed her the letter. She opened it up and it said, my dearest queen, please take the boy who gives you this letter and marry him to our daughter right away. <laughs> well, she was a little confused by that, but it was the king's handwriting. So she called down her daughter. They got the, the preacher and they were married. Guess how surprised the king was when he came home the next day. The king said, did you get my letter? And she said, yes, I did. Did you carry it out? Yes, I did. They're married and they're outside right now. <laughs> well, what do you mean married? It said cut off his head. 
No, no, it said married, and she showed him the letter, and the king realized he'd been tricked again. But he was not going to allow that boy to stay married to his daughter. So he called the boy to him, said, son, if you want to stay married to my daughter, you have to bring me the three golden hairs that grow on the head of the devil. And the boy said, okay. <laughs> and he went off. Now, in those days, the devil lived on an island far away. And the boy traveled and he came to a village and the village, uh, the guard stopped him and said, Halt, who are you? Where are you going? What do you want? And the boy said, oh, I, I'm just a traveler. I know all, I see all, I do all. And the guard said, well, if that's true, maybe you can help us. We have a, a fountain in the middle of our village and wine used to flow from the fountain, but now nothing does. Can you tell us why this is? And the boy said, well, yes, yes, I can, but wait till I come back again. And he continued on. He came to another village. And the guards at that village stopped him and said, Halt, where are you going? What do you want? Who are you? And the boy said, oh, I'm just a traveler. I know all I see, all I do all. Oh, well, if that's true, maybe you can help us. We have this tree that grows in the middle of our village and golden apples used to grow on it, but now nothing does. Can you tell us why this is? And the boy said, well, yes, yes, I can, but wait till I come back. And he continued on. Eventually he came to the river of death. On the other side was the devil's island. He was trying to figure out how to get across the river when an old boatman rowed over. The boy got in the boat and the boatman started to row to the other side. As he was rowing, the boatman said, why are you a child of the living going to the devil's island? And the boy said, oh, I'm just a traveler. I know all I do, all I see all. Well, if that's true, maybe you can help me. I've been rowing this boat for thousands of years and I can't seem to stop. Can you tell me how to stop? And the boy said, well, yes, yes I can, but wait till I come back again. He got to the other side, he got out of the boat. He looked around the island, he found a cave and went down hundreds and hundreds of feet into the ground. And there at the bottom was a little house and on the mailbox it said devil. <laughs> so the boy went up to the door and he knocked on the door and who do you think answered that door? That's right, it was the devil's grandmother. <laughs> the devil's grandmother said, what are you doing here, boy? Don't you know who my grandson is? If he catches you, he'll steal your soul and torture you for eternity. And the boy started to cry. He said, please, 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 I'm married to a princess, but I can't stay married unless I bring back the three golden hairs that grow on your grandson's head. She said, you know what? I never have company. Come inside, we'll have some coffee, we'll talk for a while, I'll get you the three golden hairs. He goes, well, wait, there's more. There's this village that has a fountain and wine used to flow from the fountain, but nothing flows, not even water, I need to know why that is. And there's another village that's a tree, with golden apples used to grow from it, but now nothing grows from it, I need to know why that is. And there's a boatman who's been rowing a boat for thousands of years and he can't stop it, I need to know how to make him stop. She says, calm down, calm down, I'll ask you questions. So she invited him in, they had a little food. She looked at the clock and said, oh dear, my grandson's almost home. So she turned the boy into an ant, placed the ant inside of her apron. And just then the door flew open and the devil came in, started to sniff the air and said, I smell a human in here. He started looking cabinets, throw pillows around, search the closets. She said, stop it, stop it. You're making a mess. Of course you smell a human. You work with them. You smell like one. Don't take a bath. <laughs> so she threw him in the bath. After he came out of the bath, she gave him some dinner. They sat down on the couch. She said, you know, you work so hard. Why why don't you rest your head on Granny's lap? So she rested his head on her lap and she started to stroke his hair. She started to sing to him. Pretty soon he fell asleep. And as soon as he fell asleep, she plucked the first golden hair out of his head. Ah, he screamed, what happened? She said, I had a nightmare. A nightmare? What did you dream? Oh, I dreamed of a village. It has a, a fountain in the middle and wine used to flow from the fountain, but now nothing flows, not even water. I mean, why could that be? That village, there's a frog underneath there. They just have to take it away and the wine will flow again. Oh, that sounds like a good answer. Why don't you rest your head on granny's lap? So the devil rested his head on his grandmother's lap and she started to stroke his hair. She started to sing to him and pretty soon he fell asleep. As soon as he fell asleep, she plucked the second golden hair out of his head. Ah, he screamed, what happened? I had another nightmare, she said. Another one, what did you dream this time? Oh, this time I dreamed of a village that has a, a tree in the middle and golden apples used to grow from the tree, but now nothing grows. I mean, why could that be? Well, that village, the, the tree has a mouse at the roots gnawing on them. If they take it away, the tree will be fine. If they leave the mouse, the tree will die. Oh, well, that sounds like a good answer. Why don't you rest your head on granny's lap again? <laughs> so the devil rested his head and she started to stroke his hair and sing to him and pretty soon he fell asleep. 
As soon as he fell asleep, she plucked the third golden hair out of his head. I screamed, what happened? Can I help it if I have so many nightmares, she said. I'm going to be bald at this rate. Fine, what did you dream this time? It was terrible. This time I dreamed of a boatman who's been rowing a boat for thousands of years and can't stop. I mean, how could he ever stop? Oh, that old fool, he just has to hand his oar to someone else and then they'd have to row the boat. That sounds like a good answer. Why don't you rest? I'm not resting my head anywhere, said the devil. And he went inside and he went to bed. In the morning, he left for work. She took the ant, turned it back into a boy, handed him the three golden hairs and said, did you listen? Did you listen well? Did you hear the answers? And the boy said, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good. Now go marry your princess. Never come back here again. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the boy left the house, went up through the cave, came to the shore and waited. And there was the boatman. And the boatman said, you have returned. Do you have my answer? Yes, I do, said the boy, but take me to the other side first. <laughs> so the boy got in the boat. The boatman rowed him to the other side. As soon as he was on the other side, he said, the next person who comes by, just hand him your oar. You'll be free. And then he ran off. Now the boy came to the village with the tree. And the guard said, you've returned. You have our answer. And the boy said, yes, yes, I do. Remember that answer? The boy said, look at the roots of your tree. You will find a mouse there. Take the mouse away, your tree will be fine. And so they looked at the roots, they found the mouse, they took it away and the apple started to grow again. They were so happy, they gave the boy two donkeys laden down with sacks full of gold. The boy continued on to the first village. The guard stopped him and said, you've returned, you have our answer. The boy said, yes, I do. Look underneath your fountain, you'll find a frog. He's blocking the flow of the wine. Take him away, you'll be your wine will flow again. They looked under a rock, there was the frog. They took him away, the wine started to flow. They were so happy, they gave the boy two donkeys laden down with sacks full of gold. So the boy returned to the kingdom, and he went turned with the three golden hairs and the four donkeys with the sacks of gold. And the king saw him, but more than that, the king saw all the money following the boy, and he ran out. And the boy said, here, here, your majesty, here are the three golden hairs of the devil. The king says, who cares about that? Where did you get all this gold from? And the boy said, all the gold? It's from the devil's island. It's, it's all around everywhere you look. This is all I could carry, but I bet you could carry more. And the king got his fastest horse and he rode off to the devil's island. He came to the river of death and there was the boatman. And the king said, quickly, man, take me to the other side, quick. And the boatman said, would you like to row? And the king took the oar. The boatman jumped out and said, I'm free and ran off. <laughs> now the boy was allowed to stay married to the princess. And in time they became king and queen and ruled very wisely. And as far as I know, the king is still rowing that boat to this very day. And that is the devil with the three golden hairs from the stories of the Brothers Grimm.